Hello, I am Dr. Ayla Swami from Chennai, India. I am going to show you a case of right endoscopic immunoplasty done under local anesthesia in the case of subtotal perforation in a 20-year-old female girl. Already the graft has been taken and canal has been infiltrated. The margins are freshened in the subtotal perforation and the after the sickle knife incision or a probe a incision on the just millimeter away from the margin all around has been done which I have shown the video the all around thin strip of fibrotic tissue has been removed now I am using my own innovation Dr. Aguilas endoscopic diathermy round knife to make the incision for the tympanometrial flap use it at a very low power of 10 in the diathermy machine otherwise the skin gets charred too much and there will be lot of skin damage this is a minimally edited video the patient had been taken under moderate IV sedation now I am using regular round knife of course you can use the same diathermy knife also to elevate the tympanometrial flaw appreciate the field quality hardly any bleeding when you are doing with a single handed endoscopic ear surgery there is no need to do suction frequently or use adrenaline soaked cotton ball to arrest the bleeding from the incision site which normally is a very nightmare job sometimes when it bleeds from the incision site this is a tympanometrial suture line which is little tough to elevate that area a small disadvantage is uh, the healing at the incision site will be a bit slow when you use my diathermy knife sometimes there may be a granulation if it occurs, you can use Zolief ointment postoperatively on the granulation area. But it makes the surgery very much easy, fast. No nightmare like bleeding from the incision site, no frequent suction or using adrenaline soaked cotton ball to arrest the bleeding. Now the tympanometer flap is almost cleanly elevated. Now I am going to enter the middle layer space by lifting the annulus. So I am lifting the annulus and entering the middle layer space. Now I have used the cotton ball to, for easy elevation. Now I am using the plaster knife for the complete elevation, putting the flap to see any tear in the flap or not. cotton ball has been removed now I am using the dried temporal fascia graft harvested from the same patient's temporal region I am using the skin elevator or the flap elevator to push the graft anteriorly to up to the anterior annulus then put back the flap and see the approximation and tug in the anterior margins of the graft very well so that it completely covers the perforation area with the drum elevator or a skin elevator it 
that's almost very well completely covered and there's a suture line now lift the timonometer flap along with the graft and that place a lot of gel foam in the middle layer so that the graft is lift up and forms a suture line with the raw area of the timony membrane for perforation I use dry gel foam alternately with antibiotic that is suprafloxin with dexamethasone soaked gel foam and put the in the middle layer. Put the flap, see that the graft is very well lift up and causes a suture line. Then I am just uh, putting in gentle suction to suck the blood to see that the graft is very well suture lined with the timonometrial flap or the margin of the perforation. More gel foam over the graft and timonometrial flap to fill the canal. Finally, I will keep an antibiotic soaked roller pack in the canal and uh, discharge the patient as daycare in the same day evening. I will ask the patient to come after 7 days to remove the canal pack but I will not disturb the gel foam. In this patient I didn't show the mobility of the uh, ossicles which I tested already which has been edited and not shown. Thank you for watching. See you in another beautiful video soon. You can contact me at the following address anytime. Thank you. Bye bye.